Welcome back. You're listening to the discussion, Seeing Threats, Stopping Breaches, sponsored by Vectra on Federal News Network. I'm your host, Jason Miller. My guest today is Brian Davis, the Director of Federal Security Solutions at Vectra. Now, Brian, before break, we're talking about this idea of network visibility and understanding more than just, hey, I have a lot of data. Hey, what's this data mean? But really taking it to the next level. You mentioned this idea of metadata. A lot of what agencies now are doing is as they move to the cloud, their data increases, but their metadata hopefully is going to get better too because there's a lot of security tools that come from these cloud services. Walk me through a little bit about as agencies move more off-prem, as their network changes, the complexity of their network it kind of changes, how does this all fit together to, to really ensure that you are protecting yourself against threats? Yeah, so I think I think one of the challenge is one of the challenges is managing transformation, right? So on the adoption side, these capabilities and platforms are leveraged every day, right? More Office 365, it makes it easier, makes business operations more efficient. You know, moving to cloud, you know, shrinks that on-prem footprint and does all these great things. But during this transition and adoption, oftentimes the same tools that were being used before are trying to be forced or adapted into these new environments or separate products are leveraged to secure this environment and not that environment, for example, cloud versus on-prem. And very quickly, you have these disjointed at best solutions that now it's the responsibility of the analyst or the person in the SOC to log in and out of, to pull separate data or to combine that data in a SIM. And now it's their job, their responsibility, their heavy lift to sort through all of that, make heads or tails of it. The data is oftentimes not normalized where somebody might be an expert in network traffic on-prem, but then the way that cloud operates and SaaS operates, it's much different. And so now you have a skill set gap spanning multiple different environments across multiple different tools and so that problem is, is even further compounded. And so I think it's important, and I think a lot, a lot of the folks that we're working with in the federal government are taking this approach now where they're taking a step back and looking at where they need to go, the flexibility that they need to respond to things like COVID, increasing mobile work, the mobile workforce and supporting and sustaining that over potentially long or longer periods of time. And then looking at the security architecture and choosing capabilities and platforms that have extensibility, broad coverage across all of these that can pull that data in, normalize it, and now your analyst has one view of the entire environment, the entire surface area of the organization, and can now track users as they operate throughout the day, whether that is someone that's in the network on location, whether it's somebody traveling, VPNing in, connecting via Office 365, you can now with a vector type capability supported by and driven by that AI and ML to do all the heavy lifting, right? Sorting through all that metadata, making all the connection points and painting that clear picture. You have an analyst with a single platform view of everything that's happening. And it makes it that much easier for, <clears throat> excuse me, our technologies to surface and identify a detection to something that is highly probable to be malicious or an attacker or a misuse of a credential by an insider, right? Some of that works for the organization. And overall, it just reduces the risk profile immensely across the organization and further supports future transformation adoption in these areas. So I think it's, it's definitely an enabler. You know, when you get it right, when you make your team efficient, you reduce risk, you have better visibility and security confidence that there's no in-progress attack on the network at that moment as well as the confidence to know that if anything happens, if any attacker does try to move laterally or do something within the organization, that you're going to be able to see it and shut it down in very quick time. All right, Brian, I was waiting for you to say it. Uh, the single pane of glass, what we hear many times in the cybersecurity world, but you said single platform, so congratulations not to fall into that trap. But I think uh, just to be serious, though, uh, that's what we're really talking about here is there's so many tools out there, so many different where the data is coming from and agencies are, are maybe overwhelmed by not just data, but by the tools and you can't hire enough people. And I think what you're talking about here is really looking for that needle in the pile of needles and then understanding what that really needle is. Is it a sewing needle or is it a hypodermic or what? 
Yes, exactly. And so I, I think it really goes back to that overall plan, right? Assessing the tools that you have because finding that needle and a stack of needles becomes really complicated when you don't have normalized data to work from, right? If you're working in different data types and it's on the, on the, on the, uh, on the job responsibility of the human to pull it together, there are some smart, amazing brain power folks in organizations today that if they, they're given enough time and enough resources and support, they can figure this out and they do figure it out, you know, all the time, but it's, can it scale? And when the environment changes, how quickly does it take for them to understand and adapt what they're doing to the new situation, the new scenario? And the fact is that it doesn't matter how smart you are, it, it doesn't scale. You need to be able to identify the, like the attacker behavior like we do, figure it out and get the machines and the AI and the ML to do those mundane tasks, the stuff that can be repeated over and over and over again, and then take that brain power and redeploy it to looking at the bigger picture, right? Looking at their environment and bringing their judgment to bear into decisions that need to be made, whether to authorize something that is legitimate or shut something down in, in quick time and prevent a breach from happening. So it's, it's, it's the right capability. It's the right interpretation of the right data. And then what data or alerts are provided to the analyst, right? Because the analysts are very often overwhelmed and you know, we haven't touched on this point yet and it's not always touched upon, but brain drain is a big problem, right? So if I came to work every day and felt like I didn't make any difference, I wouldn't be fulfilled. I wouldn't be happy. I wouldn't feel like my existence in that role, in that job mattered. And that's a big problem. Many are faced with that today. And so that's something that certainly needs to be addressed and is addressed when you equip that person, that team with something that they can leverage to make a difference, to feel like what they do matters. You know, it makes an amazing difference. And you could retain those people for longer, longer periods of time and then use that to do better for the agency mission and for the government mission as a whole. I think you're right that that is very much underestimated, the importance of making sure people are happy when they come to work. If you're looking through mounds of data every day, eventually you're gonna say, why am I doing this? I, I'm a security person, I can go get a new job somewhere else. You brought up this idea of, of using AI, ML tools several times. Let's talk more about that aspect of, of this because that's key, get, get one, use the technology to uh, deal with the mundane tasks, but it's also the next level is really identifying patterns more quickly that maybe you or I could do it if we're trained right, but really that you can train the technology much more quickly to identify those patterns and then use your brain power, my brain power to say, yay or nay, you know, this is the problem or not. Exactly. Right. So, I mean, I think we're at the forefront of this happening more and more often where we are bringing this type of capability to bear. You know, I think we're, we're definitely at Vector leaders in this market space. We've been doing it for more than eight years. We've been taking this unique approach, understanding that this has to be done and it has to be done well in order to scale with the volume and complexity of the threats that are, that are inbound day to day, right? So in, like you mentioned, and I mentioned before, on a small scale, yeah, most people can work it out with minimal tools but as the networks get more complex, bigger, uh, more users, more dichotomy between remote users, on-prem, you know, IoT, industrial systems or weapon systems that you know, are presenting different type of behaviors on the network, it becomes too big to scale. And so I think we, we really found our niche early where we understood and have proven with many government customers that we could apply this new approach with that AI ML to support the user. And that's what it's all about. It's not about AI to replace the human, it's human intelligence and artificial intelligence working together so that you can scale to what alerts and what needs to be addressed today and to prepare for a spike or a huge spike when something were to happen tomorrow. We never know exactly what our adversaries and nation states have, a, have in store for us, uh, but I don't think we're ever surprised and we never want to be caught without the tools to identify and respond as quickly as possible. It's interesting. You bring up this idea of never be caught without the tools to respond. I listened to a recent hearing that the house had around NASA cybersecurity. And one of the things that that, that came up during the hearing was the, the amount of 
the tax that NASA is seeing during the pandemic as people working from home, the threat service in, in increases. And I don't think this is a NASA thing. I think it's probably every organization, every agency. Is that the other piece when you say you got to prepare for what, for that spike tomorrow? That's a perfect example of all of a sudden, if your the amount of you know, phishing attacks jumps by 40 or 50%, your folks could be missing in the security operations center that those, those signs because there's just too much data. But if you have some of these tools, the tools can, parse through that data much more quickly. That's, that's really the benefit here. And then also reduce false positives. Oh, we have a problem. And then, oh, it's not a big deal. I mean, that's the other piece of this. Yes. And so I, I think that the real exciting thing is, I mean, we're talking about network security and protection. You know, we're talking about detections and identifying attacker behavior, but there's, there's also another piece to this. And to build off of what you just said, there is providing that visibility, having those alerts and detections, but also harvesting and collecting the right data to have the right size and amount of a data repository so that our nation's threat hunters, right? So when we have a lot of incident response going on for what's inbound, what's active, based on priority, what has to be responded to and investigated right now? And then, you know, our platform does a really great job at saying, okay, here's what we definitely know is malicious that you need to focus on today. But here are a couple areas that we've analyzed, and it's really a sight line to where if somebody were sitting down wanting to do a proactive hunt session within their network, we would give them visibility and direction. We would shine a light on what to hunt for and where to hunt for it with no guarantees, but with high probability that if they spend an hour in our tool, it's going to be more benefit than just going out there and starting to just chase things down at more random fashion. Brian, we're just about out of time. This has been a really helpful conversation. I'm just going to ask you for a quick, maybe 30 seconds. What's the one thing agencies should keep in mind as they modernize their security operations center? We know that there's plans that were due to OMB in uh, September. So, but uh, uh, give me a sense what, as they move forward with these plans, what's the one, maybe one thing they should keep in mind? I, I think there's, I mean, there's probably a few things that they're already thinking about, right? One is, you know, the objective assessment of what you have in place. You know, we talked about it, we mentioned it before, but we didn't go too much into detail about the platforms and the products and the solutions that are in most federal agencies today. And they're being leaned on to solve for problems they were never created to solve for, right? So I think assessing and reassigning those capabilities to where they add the most value. Right. So if you have a signature requirement, the perimeter makes the most sense, not deploying it through all the different segments internal in the network, because that usually doesn't provide the right alerts and could be absolutely noisy. And there's a lot of overhead in tuning that. But there is a place if you have a requirement. So it's it's consigning the solutions to the areas that they provide the most value and then augmenting and overlaying with capabilities like network detection and response that are fueled and driven by the tools that will take the undue burden off of your teams and give them the rich information, actionable information so that they can do their jobs, do their jobs well, not only at the levels of today, but in preparation and support of the levels for tomorrow. And then, you know, we're honestly privileged to work with a lot of great people within the federal government. And I'll tell you, Everyone is dedicated, they're motivated, they wanna support their agency in pursuit and success of their mission, as well as the defense of the nation. And honestly, one thing is abundantly clear every time we engage is that if you give these people, if you give these teams uh, and these great people the right tools, like AI, ML-driven network detection and response, advanced adversaries are definitely caught on the network. And for me, there's no better job satisfaction than that right there. All right, very good. Uh, Brian, there's so much more to talk about. Unfortunately, we are out of time for today. So let me thank my guest. Brian Davis is the Director of Federal Security Solutions at Vectra. Brian, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm Jason Miller, and you've been listening to the discussion, Seeing Threats, Stopping Breaches, sponsored by Vectra on Federal News Network. For more on this discussion, visit federalnewsnetwork.com and search Vectra.